Mabuhay! Welcome to our simple tour. A tour that has full of excitement and knowledge where you can learn not only the facts but also the fun place to go. Stay tuned and travel with us. Hi guys! We, we are, are the Group 3. We are here now at Fort Santiago to explore the wonder of Manila. So we are here now at Fort Santiago. A widely known location that's often visited for educational purposes, Fort Santiago was built in the 1950s to be used as a fortress for Manila. The place is a national cultural treasure in 2014 and a national shrine and national monument in 1951. Following the new rules due to the pandemic, Fort Santiago is open on weekdays from 9am to 7.30pm and on weekends from 9am to 8.30pm. Tickets are a must in order to enter the place, with the general admission being priced at 75 pesos. Although students, children, and PWD can avail the ticket for 50 pesos. One of the many historical sites in Fort Santiago is Plaza Mariones. Plaza Mariones, formerly known as Plaza de la Fuerza or Plaza of the Fort, is a military parade ground of Fort Santiago. In 1863, an earthquake severely damaged Fort Santiago and the plaza was used as military barracks. In the late 1800s, Plaza de la Fuerza was renamed Plaza Mariones after Domingo Mariones, the Spanish Governor General from 1877 to 1880. Fort Santiago Gate Here stands the gate leading to the inner sanctum of Fort Santiago. The gate of Fort Santiago was destroyed during the Battle of Manila in 1945. The main gate is decorated by a relief or wood relief carving of Santiago Matamoros, St. James the Moor Slayer, the Phaedra of Saint of Spain, together with the coat of arms of the Kingdom of Castile and Leon. What remains of the original gate are involved Spanish soldiers now deface. The image of St. James Santiago, a symbol of Spanish sovereignty, decorates countries occupied by the Spaniards such as Chile and Mexico. Welcome to the Maceo de Rizal. Administered by the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, this shrine reaffirmed Rizal's significance in Philippine history. How is dead served as inspiration in struggle of Philippine independence. This brick barracks, which was first built in the 16th century, has been in a ruined state since the destruction during the Battle of Manila in 1945. Here, Jose Rizal was in prison for 56 days from November 3 to December 29, 1896. The entire right of wing of this building, which contained his prison cell, was reconstructed in 1953 as a museum and as a shrine dedicated to Jose Rizal. It was renovated in 1998 for the Philippine independence sentences and subsequently modernized in 2014. The Fort Santiago's Dungeons what is now a tourist attraction was the site of a horrible war crime during World War II and was used by the Spaniards as a prison in the 16th century. This is the largest chamber in the Fort Santiago dungeon. Most of the 600 victims who perished in this dungeon in 1945 were found here. And as you crawl into the tiny entrance, a somber atmosphere takes hold. You just stepped into the hallowed grounds where at least 600 people died of torture and suffocation. Hundreds of maggot-eaten bodies were discovered by the Americans when they recaptured Intramuros from the Japanese in 1945. The state in which the bodies were found suggested the victims were tortured, starved, and died of suffocation. Welcome to Museo Ni Manuel Quezon. This was built in 1979 and modernized in 2015. Museo Ni Manuel Quezon is a museum that contains the remains and memorabilia of the father of Quezon City, the first president of the Commonwealth, Manuel Luis Quezon. It is located in the Quezon City Shrine. The said museum was designed by Federico Lustre and served as the mausoleum of President Quezon and his wife, Aurora Aragon. It showcases the life and political career of the late president and his pivotal role in the independence of the country. 
Aside from this, it also contains sizable collection of President Quezon's memorabilia, a hologram of President delivering his inaugural address, and several interactive booths and terminals that gives information about Quezon's life. The, this museum is also free of entrance because it is also being managed by the NHCP. Visiting Fort Santiago, notable for being the headquarters of several armies of foreign powers, educates us in Philippine history. While the shine of Manuel Quezon helps us understand history through the exploration of the museum, visiting these historical landmarks leave an impact on us as it paves a way for how we will decide in our present and future plans. Other than this, traveling to different places satisfy our curiosity through having new adventures.